Right now, the day's biggest news stories from a Vegas perspective. This is the Vegas Take with Sharp and Shapiro. All right, welcome back. It is the Vegas Take. Sharp and Shapiro rolling out the red carpet for hour number three from my kitchen, by the way. The reason for that is, and by the way, if you don't believe us, go ahead and go on our YouTube page and subscribe to the Vegas Take page. We're on YouTube now also. The reason is, is because the building, that the studios that we are in at Beasley Broadcasting are currently in lockdown right now, as many others are as well. So that is the reason why we are broadcasting from our kitchen or from my kitchen right now where i don't do a lot of cooking by the way but uh, a lot of stuff going on throughout the country in regards to the coronavirus particularly in california where gavin newsom put this law into effect we have a california shutdown it's official it is officially against the law if you're going to drive and, and have a party or go anywhere unless it's out of necessity so the guy joining us on the line right now we love having him on every week to talk politics, but I'm not sure that's going to be the conversation today. He is the Hollywood conservative. We call him Mr. X because he is a hotshot producer out there in L.A., but he's a conservative and, and he doesn't want to be outed for that. Sadly, he joins us right now on the line. Mr. X, what do you think about this California shutdown, man? Well, first of all, I just have this vision of you guys. That I'm envisioning like Wayne's World, like you guys in your basement <laughs> broadcasting Ironic. the show. But uh, what do I think of this shutdown? <laughs> well, I, I'm so upset about it that this morning I walked down to my local coffee shop and got an iced tea and a bagel. And there were other people down there. And, and then after that, I went and walked my dog. So that's that's generally how I feel about it. But in all in all seriousness, I know you didn't want to talk politics, but... Are we at a point now where we can honestly say that Newsom is the worst governor in the United States? Like, <laughs> well, I, be <laughs> well, you know a lot more about him than I, so I'll take your word for it. Sadly, I do. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, so I would imagine you don't agree. I, no, and I, I'm actually surprised you guys even wanted to have me on. There's really nothing going on in the media right now. It's kind of a boring time. Like, a, you know, <laughs> there's not much happening. So. Well, there is some things happening, and we will get to that, uh, especially this Imagine video. We're going to get to that coming up here in just oh a few God. minutes. But, but I want to get your thoughts on just, you know, again, I, I know you disagree with it, but these are unprecedented times that we're living in right now. As you know, Mr. X, right here in Las Vegas, all the casinos are shut down. It's wild. It's crazy. And in California, I can't even imagine how many people are, are losing money and losing business, whether you own a business or whether you're, you're working at one of these businesses. I mean, these are really scary times we're living in. And now you can't even leave your house unless it's at a necessity for a job, if you're lucky enough to still be working, or to a pharmacy or to a supermarket. I mean, what do you make of that? That's scary. It's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, I, I talk to J.D. often privately via the old DMs on Facebook and – we discuss it at, at length, and honestly, I, I'm almost tired of discussing it. It's so stupid. Like, uh, the, in my opinion, this is going to go down in history as one of the biggest overreactions in, in the history of mankind. I mean, I, I just – the my, my opinion is that the, the response in, in contrast with what this virus actually is is – so vastly overstated, and it, it's just – it's insane. Like uh, the, the economic tumult that this is causing right now is so much worse than getting the flu. I mean yeah, like, yeah. I don't know if you guys know who Paul Schrader is. He's a, he's a pretty famous director. He, he actually was obviously the guy who wrote Taxi Driver, and he, he recently did that movie um, with Ethan Hawke, First Reformed. And – He's shooting a film, was shooting a film right now, and it got shut down because of this nonsense. And his right. response was, why? I don't want to shut down. He's like, I'd rather get this disease than shut down. Like, I, that's fine. He's like, I would die for my art. Like, I don't care. And I kind of feel the same to an extent, especially because I'm not going to die, and most people who get this aren't. And I just think that the, the media scare tactics right now with regard to this are so – absurd and the way that that honestly trump has mismanaged this but in his defense i think he's under a lot of pressure from the wildly corrupt cdc and who so i mean it's honestly just the whole thing is a giant poop show i will so say. so, so uh, mr x gavin newsom last night not only did he did he declare the you know the, the lockdown for one month but he also stated that if he had to institute martial law 
he would. And I don't think I've heard a governor say that, I mean, and definitely not in my lifetime. But how would yeah. that even be possible in a state like California with 50 million people? It's not. I mean, I, I feel like that would cost trillions of dollars. Yeah, I think you'd, you'd have to take the majority of the military, definitely the National Guard, National Guard, and put them in that one. I mean, I, I just, I feel like when he makes statements like that, he's not thinking about the, the actual, you know, hard, hard logistics behind it. And when you hear your governor say something like that, how does it make you feel? Well, remember what I said at the open where I asked if this is the worst governor in the country? I mean, le legitimately an idiotic thing to say. Like, you, you cannot institute martial law in Los Angeles. And I'm not saying that just because, like, no, you can't do this. It's not right. No, 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 you can't. Like, there's too many people here. It's too big. Like, what are you going to do? <laughs> Seriously. Like, All right, but I have to ask you this, Mr. X. So much I money. And, and, it's just, and it's not just L.A. It's L.A., San Francisco, San Diego, California. Sacramento. And, and, yeah, and like, you have so many people issue, there. It, right. And my biggest issue, honestly, with what he said, and, and I've seen a couple of governors do this and a couple of politicians, and it's driving me crazy, is he really, he had this statement during it where he said, you know, I think that I think that. 23 million people in California are going to get this disease. Yeah, in the next eight weeks. What are you basing that on? Like, what, like that saying that just makes dumb rednecks. Okay, but, but, but their well, uh, is, is, isn't, isn't that kind of a form of fear mongering as well? That's what I'm saying. That's hold exactly on a second, guys. Said. Okay, hold on a second, guys. There are healthcare professionals throughout the country, some that even work in the Trump administration, that are saying it is not out of the realm of possibility that somewhere in the next several months, between 40 to 70 percent of everybody in this country at one point or another okay. could contract the virus. Sure. You, you do and understand three, that, right? And I have three responses to that. Number one, saying that there's a possibility something may happen is very different than what he said. He said definitively 20, 20 50 percent of California is going to get this. There was well, no they're saying more more than – well, I understand what you're saying, but, but a lot of these professionals, again, even those in the Trump administration, it, okay. it is more than likely. They're not saying it's 100 percent. Right. So, so to my second point, uh, the, CD, the CDC and these individuals, these are, this is a for-profit business. Like these guys are not just these benevolent angels who wake up in the morning and want to cure cancer. They, they prosper – off of stuff like this and finding vaccines and f when people are afraid like this this is their their time to shine essentially so yes it's true they are going to say things like that because and also to like set aside the conspiracy theory nonsense like fine what what's the number one motivation for doctors in this country the answer to not get sued period right That's all they care right. about so right. if they say look this is not as serious as we that's we a, were that's a fair point. That's a and fair point. I, I get where you're going. And people yeah. are not going to get it. And then and they die. People do get it. Then they right. do. So oh, that's that, a that's so a that, very that. Listen, I agree with you. That's a very fair point that you just said in that people are afraid of lawsuits, whether it be a company, a radio station. It could be a restaurant, whatever the case may be. be a casino. Exactly. They are being right. A yeah. casino. Yeah. So. Right. But I'm sure. Yeah, you, yeah, exactly. But I'm sure you would also agree. It's better to be on the side of caution than no. to underestimate 100%, this. No, 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 no. So you think the casinos being should be open right now? Being cautious is one thing, but this is not caution. Caution would have been, look, if you're elderly or you're immunocompromised, we advise that you stay inside. If you're younger, there is a chance that you're going to get this. So we also recommend that you're careful and you wash your hands and you do what Trump initially wanted to do until the CDC, again, a for-profit organization, said no. It has to be way more serious. We got to quarantine. Being cautious would have been that. What we're doing now is so much worse and more detrimental to this country well, that it's like this is far beyond caution. You have to be responsible with what you say. If you make a statement like, because this is not an incorrect statement, 100 percent of this country might get COVID and they might die. That's right. not a, that, like 100 percent of this this country's population could die from this virus. All right. Well, listen, that's it's a, a, that's not a lie. it's it's but while it's I don't panic and riot. I, I hear you. While I don't 100 percent agree with you, uh, I don't necessarily disagree with you either, if that makes sense. I think we should be able to find a happy medium by not overreacting. And listen, there's a lot of people in Las so. Vegas. Well, there's a lot of people in Las Vegas that would agree with you. There's a lot of people that are not working sure. today. For the next yeah. month, they're not going to be able to work. They don't know where their next paycheck is coming. Luckily, there are some companies that are stepping to the plate, but not all of them. And and the these are people. The film industry shut down. Like, I'm not right, getting a right. paycheck. Like, my no, I hear you. Deals, deals yeah. that I had that were very close to closing 
before this happened have stopped. Investors no, listen, are like, right. we don't know when things are going to go. And and causing that kind of uncertainty mm-hmm. is unacceptable. No, it listen, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a valid point. I, I think we, we haven't really found that happy medium yet. And listen, I, I'm not happy about what's going on here in Las Vegas. Uh, at the same time, I want people to be safe and be cared. But listen, you bring up some excellent points. If you're just joining us, we're speaking with Mr. X, the Hollywood conservative producer out there in Hollywood. The entire movie industry has been shut down. Speaking of celebrities, Mr. X, speaking of the movie industry, I had to play you a little bit of audio. This is uh, Wonder Woman, Gal Gadot, and other celebrities singing John Lennon's song Imagine on social media, and it's been sparking some backlash for being tone deaf and out of touch with society. So we want to play a little tidbit of this for you, and then we want you to comment on it. Here it is. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us. Above us only sky. Imagine all the people living for today. Yeah. Imagine there is no countries yet. It isn't hard to do. Nothing to kill or die for. And no religion too. So we had Jimmy Fallon there. We had Sarah Silverman. First of all, none of them can sing. The guy who sang for us last segment, Prompto, did a much better job than anybody in that song. Uh, so people are saying a lot of these celebrities are tone deaf and they're, they're doing this stupid song. And, uh, you know, it, it reminded me a little bit of Michael Jackson, which was a lot better. The song he did with all those celebrities well, was great. We are the world. Yeah, right. We are the world. Right. The same thing happened after 9-11. It was Where is the Love. Remember that? Yeah. I, yeah. So, so let me get your reaction to this, Mr. X. Do you think it's fair, the criticism that these celebrities are getting for putting this song out? A lot of people are saying they're tone deaf. What do you say? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a reason why much of America can't stand Hollywood, and it's pretty much summed up in that horrific <laughs> viral video, whatever the hell that was. I mean, I couldn't even listen to it. I, that viral virus I, video. I, I like, yeah, exactly. I like Gal Gadot. She's beautiful, and she's great as Wonder Woman. But get get out of here. Nobody wants to hear this. Like, if people are already annoyed. People are already annoyed that that celebrities and and NBA players are getting, you know, tested and normal people can't, which is also insane. Like the fact that like right, how, right. how are suddenly like so many celebrities and NBA players and stuff have this virus? Like this means that we all probably have it or had it at some point pretty recently and well, especially you, you just can't test for it. When you look at the new numbers, which I think it says 16,500 cases confirmed in the United States mm-hmm. and 220 some odd deaths, the, it, the, the actual fatality rate for those who have been tested, who have either they have had symptoms that have been strong enough to be tested or they're in New York City or, or somewhere there's testing available, 1.36% of those people are dying. And that, that's actually significantly down from 1.6%, which I, I think that that number is going to keep dropping as well. But but considering that, it, it is very interesting and, that, that the wealthiest and the most famous people in this country have access well, to this. Well, Mr. Tech. X, let me add something as well. You know, you heard all those celebrities in that song. They think they're doing the part. Let me tell you who's doing their part. Let me bring up the Vegas Golden Knights, for example. They've raised uh, excess of five hundred thousand dollars to be distributed to all those in the hold on all those in the T-Mobile amina, uh, arena that need help. The employees that aren't working, the vendors. How about a guy like a Kevin Love, uh, an NBA player, former All Star, who put up a hundred thousand know, dollars awesome. uh, to help the people in his arena get by? Those are the celebrities that are using that platform for good. For these morons and idiots, and I don't know if all of them haven't haven't uh, done some other things i hope some of them have but i would think that some of them haven't they think because they sing a couple lyrics of imagine by john lennon uh you know uh, they think that they're doing their part i think it is tone deaf it's uh, it's absurd and it's de- they, they need to definitely know their know their crowd at this point like th- th- we are this is a very sensitive and cynical time right now and nobody wants to hear from them i mean i literally don't know a single person that posted this and said this is great actually i take that back there i follow so many idiots on social media that there were definitely people this is beautiful blue. you know i, I just, like it's it's ridiculous we can all agree i don't think any of us think it was a good idea and i think they probably don't even think it was a good idea at this point mr with the back mr x occurred. The- Mr. X, it's producer Jason. I forgot to mention something when we were talking this morning. Did you happen to hear about Jared Leto? He was like, 
like yeah, having a cleansing a, hike in the debt. What was, was that about? He was on some retreat. Yeah, so he was on a meditation retreat, and I think he <laughs> returned last, like this past Sunday or something. And he said, "What is happening?" Like, <laughs> he had no idea. <laughs> he was he was gone for a month in the desert. And then oh, emerged man, and man, said, man, "Wait, man. wait, what's going on? Are, There's a are, shutdown." Are, are you talking like Joshua Tree? Is that where he was? Yeah, he was at a meditate. Well, and also there was something with like Big Brother Germany when the, they, the people on that show, didn't know. <laughs> and like, I, and that was fine. I just wish that when they when they told the the Big Brother guys, I wish that they had also like introduced a new roommate or something that looked looked kind of sickly or something at the time, just to spice <laughs> it up. I don't know, but it's just so ridiculous. Yeah. It's just another example. I I think. And you probably agree of the out of touch nature of Hollywood. These, you know, it must be nice to go take a month off and go meditate in the desert while people are getting fired from their jobs as yeah. you know servers and uh, you yeah. know other that's, you know other service that, industry that's jobs. Honestly, that's honestly the part of this that's actually been bothering me the most with regard to like social media in particular is that I see so many people who are like. We've got a we've got a social distance, and if I hear the term social distancing one more time, I'm gonna hurl. But <laughs> I, so many people. Well, women have been practicing in, that with me since I was a very young child. Yeah, exactly. Stay indoors and yada yada. Like most of the people I see who are saying this are upper middle class, and they you know have jobs where they can work from home. Like that's easy for you to say. Sure, let's stay home. You know, like, what about the people, what about the, the single mom who works, you know, a full-time yeah. job and has kids? Like, no, listen, I, like, I have to admit. F off, man. I, I, you know I, I, I mean? Listen, I have to admit, I'm taking your side on just about everything you said today. I, I don't necessarily disagree with you. Like I said, I think there needs to be some sort of happy medium, and we don't have that right now. Now, moving on, what more important person to talk about? Then uh, what I consider as the double murderer himself, O.J. Simpson. Uh, oh, Simpson is yeah. reacting to the coronavirus, but <laughs> the first person he's the first person he's thinking about is himself. I know that might be a shocker to you. I want you to listen to a little bit of this audio. This is O.J. Simpson, who, by the way, lives a couple miles down from where I live right now, where we're mm -hmm. broadcasting. This is O.J. Simpson reacting on the golf course uh, to the coronavirus and these possible golf closures. Have a listen to this. So I kind of understand what the golf course is uh, doing. I, I'm not going to criticize them. But, you know, you let guys have their own golf cart. cart. You tell them uh, not to, you know, pull the pin out, I guess. You don't touch the pin. You don't really get that close to one another on a golf course. And I think for some of the older guys that golf is their only exercise, uh, I think it's going to hurt them if you start closing all the golf courses. <laughs> I'm just saying, and if you do close them, you better open up some insane asylum. Get me a bed, because I know if I can't play golf for the next month, I would go crazy. <laughs> oh. I'm just saying. Take care. <laughs> is that a threat? I don't know. Is he going to slit our throat? All, my, my response is, guys, let's do what OJ says, because if we want to talk about <laughs> things that have a high body count and have a high fatality rate, OJ definitely has. Well, I get, I get, so, um, I, allegedly. Okay, but allegedly. In, all, in, all, in all seriousness, oh, okay. gentlemen, gentlemen, <laughs> Mr. X, in all seriousness, that's the thing that's on O.J. Simpson's mind. He should be thanking his lucky stars that he's not behind bars. And he decides with his platform, and, and like him or not, the guy has a huge platform, right? People pay attention yeah. to what he says. The thing he decides to talk it. about is the golf course and him this, not man. being able uh, to honestly, play golf. If, if he didn't have his baggage, he's a funny guy. I mean, he could, he could have a career in comedy, in my opinion. But I actually kind of agree with him. If there's one sport you can play right now under these circumstances, it is golf. Well, you know, uh, yeah, he's right. I mean, I mean, he, he is correct. He's out of touch. He's out of touch with what's happening, and it's not the right time to say it. But he's absolutely right. I mean, why not let people go? It's a solid sport, actually... you know. But it, but it's not oh. the time. I mean, it's like there right. are people who are dying of this disease, which is unfortunate. Way less than than you know garners this response, but there are and. People are scared, and yeah, I mean, talking about golf is probably not the best idea right now. But you know, OJ well, is going to OJ. So. OJ is saying that he's going to go crazy is very, very strange because it's got to be a short journey. But you know, he's made a series, Mister X, of videos about the coronavirus, and there was one uh, last week where he was wearing a, a mask and black, literally, I can't make this up, black gloves, and he was taking a <laughs> disinfectant and spraying down his. His money, he, he had $5, he crumpled, he's crumpled five and, and $1 bills and maybe a 20 in there on a table in his backyard, and he was spraying it, and 
his his daughter was shooting the video and she says, "Dad, what are you doing?" He says, "Well, uh, well you know, uh, you know, with this coronavirus, you can't be too careful." So he's spraying his money down. I mean, the, who is going to go crazy? He is crazy, right? Yeah, o- OJ. I mean, uh, yeah, he, he, he unless he's, he's just be, unless he's in line. Wow. <laughs> I love well, it. There's no question. There's no question. His yeah. priorities are not in line, and and sadly, he lives here in Las Vegas. I wish he just moved somewhere where nobody could hear him ever again. But uh, we hope OJ never plays golf again for the rest of his life, uh, unless they have some golf courses at at uh, at some of these jails. I don't I don't think they do. But in my wow. personal opinion, that's I mean, where he belongs. OJ is innocent, so I don't know what you're talking wanna, about. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, well, let me ask you this. Uh, on a serious note, you said that uh, obviously the movies are everything production, everything shut down. Explain to me what that means for so many people that are working in Hollywood right now. The production is shut down. That means all the makeup artists, all the camera people. Explain to me the impact just from your profession and what that means. And, and not not on actors, not on the, the multi-millionaire actors. We're, we're talking like you know union oh, workers. That, that, I mean, yeah, exactly. There's, uh, I know lots of people who have filed for unemployment. You know, I, I've got. I can't tell you how many how many makeup artists and. Set designers I've seen recently on on social media, you know, pr- proposing asking if anybody wants a Skype tarot reading or you know that, that I'm like okay like yeah I mean things are, there's definitely like these are not you know these are not necessarily people who are skilled in other professions but the way that this industry and honestly this country is set up is it's not like the olden days where, you know, somebody's got multi-skills and it's like, oh, okay, I can't do makeup art. Well, no problem. I can cook or I can go do something else that, you know, it will will garner money. I mean, I've had a lot of people reach out to me and just ask if I knew of any side work and anything like that. And I'm like, I mean, no, not really. So, I mean, it's, I think that, I think that there right now there remains sort of a hope that like this will be over at some point soon. And I maintain that from the perspective that like, and I was saying this to JD the other night, I think there's going to come a point very soon where even the filthy liberals are done with this and they're done being broke and just go, no, no, no. Like this is like, I cannot pay my rent now. Like enough with this social distancing crap. I'm getting back to work. I don't care what anyone says. Right. And, 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 I, and that- I was there. I was there as soon. I was there as soon as this started, but I think other people, it's easy for them to go on social media right now and say, stay inside and post pictures of nurses saying, I, you know, I, I go to work. Can you stay home? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Get it. Got it. Right. Sounds good. Uh, I, I agree with you. I, I, th- I think this a month of no income and where yeah, you're exactly. actually struggling. No, you're going to you're going to be saying the same thing as me of like, I would rather get this virus and go on with my life legitimately. <laughs> Well, speaking of getting on with our lives, uh, we'll let you do that, Mr. X. We appreciate you coming on and and, and giving us your perspective. Safe, safe, my friend, and uh, hopefully you get back to work soon. Obviously, we're rooting for everybody to be able to get back to work soon so long as it is safe, and and hopefully it will be. But, uh, Mr. X, great point you made on the show today. Always appreciate it when you come on. Have a good All right, one, take Doc. care. Thanks a lot, Mr. X. Not a big fan of Gavin Newsom. I'm just getting that sense from uh, the, the Hollywood conservative Mr. X. But anyway, coming up next, when we get back, we're going to be joined by a man. His name is Chris Janetsky. Chris Janetsky is a guy who bought 48 boxes of toilet paper by accident with his wife. Now he's actually happy he made that mistake. He's going to share with us his story uh, in this frenzy of, of a lack of toilet paper. He's going to share that with us. The wife will be on with us, too, by the way. I oh, just, that's just learned Haiti. This will, be, uh, this will be a very interesting interview. So we're looking forward to talking to Chris when we come back on The Vegas Take. So you want to stay tuned for that. You're listening to The Vegas Take right here on the all-new 101.5 FM, 720 AM, K-Dawn. All right, welcome back. It is The Vegas Take. Sharp and Shapiro, thanks for sticking with us. Hour number three. And as you know, during this coronavirus outbreak, there are a lot of people that are struggling to get the basic necessities. I'm talking about water and toilet paper. I'm telling you, I, I, I'm out of toilet paper. I'm using paper towels, folks. I know that's a really difficult uh, graphic for you. I just gave it to you right now. But, uh, you know, a lot of people are stocking up on toilet paper. They think it's the next zombie ac- uh, apocalypse. Um, and it's a, it's a weird spot. It's a weird situation. Well, there's one couple we're going to be talking to right now. They certainly don't have a shortage of toilet paper. Let me explain. Chris Janetsky and his wife, Haiti accidentally bought 48 boxes of toilet paper before the coronavirus uh, thing happened. 
That's 2,304 rolls, ladies and gentlemen. You could go number two for the rest of your life, and that might last you enough. It's crazy. And uh, Chris and Haiti are going to try to explain that to us now. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, thanks for being here. How are you guys? Yeah, good, thank you. Yeah, very well, thanks. So I want to also uh, mention people are saying, you know, well, what about the accent? Yes, you guys live in Australia, correct? Yes. Okay, so uh, Chris or Haiti, can you give me the story starting from square one? How does this happen? When, how far back did you order this toilet paper? Just give me the story from square one, if you can. Okay. So we've been ordering our toilet paper online for a year or two, and it's a subscription service. So you sign up and you get a box every hours was 12 weeks. And it just gets charged to your credit card. We changed our order in January from the recycled toilet paper to the premium toilet paper. And in so doing, it asked me for the quantity and I typed in 48 because I wanted 48 rolls. Right. And um, about a week later, uh, about the 4th or 5th of February, I got a confirmation email saying your toilet paper's on the way. That was all good. And then on the 10th of February, it arrived at the door, but it was 48 boxes. Oh my. Okay, so who's the one that answered the door? Was it you or was it uh, Chris? It was Chris. Okay, so Chris, take me through that now. And that's an, that's an honest mistake. You know, anyone could have made that mistake. So, Chris, what is your reaction? Take me through that when you open up the door and you see these boxes of toilet paper, 2,304 rolls. Take me through that. Uh, so I opened the door and the delivery driver said, I've got a couple of crates of toilet paper for you. And I thought he was having a joke. <laughs> and, uh, he, <laughs> and I said, a couple of crates? And he said, yeah. And, and I looked out my front door into my driveway. And sure enough, there was two pallets, one pallet already on my driveway and one pallet sitting in the back of his truck, um, ready, uh, uh, full of toilet paper, ready to be delivered to us. Oh, my God. So what do you say to your wife at that point? Uh, I called out to her um, because she happened to be at home as well. And, uh, Haiti, what have you done? And uh, she comes (laughs) to the front door and goes, oh, my goodness. Uh, (laughs) And so she um, jumps on on her phone onto our credit card app um, because surely, you know, this was a mistake. And um, sure enough, we had been charged over three thousand dollars for <laughs> all of this toilet paper. Oh, three thousand dollars worth of toilet paper. Okay, this is ironic and it's strange, right, guys? Because obviously, nobody there was no shortage of toilet paper back when you guys ordered this. This is uh, important to know. This was before the coronavirus outbreak. So now you're in a situation where, uh, listen, I'm 39 years old. I can't recall ever a time in my life where there was a shortage of toilet paper, you can go to a 7-Eleven, a convenience store, a supermarket. They always had toilet paper, but now we're in a situation where we're at a shortage. So what do you make of this? I mean, it's the irony of this, right, right, guys? Yes, so ironic. And and so we, we tried to return the toilet paper because we went, how are we going to get rid of all of this, you know? Um, but in the meantime, because it, it took them a couple of days to get back to our email, and a, a few people had said, oh, well, we'll buy some off you and we'll help you out with that. And so by the time they got back to us, we had decided, oh, no, we'll keep it. We'll get rid of it. You know, it might take a year or two, but we've got some people who are willing to buy it. Um, and then when this whole toilet paper shortage thing happened, we were like, holy cow, we're set. What did you do with these boxes? Because I know I saw a picture of you standing, uh, you know, sitting on some of these boxes. And, like, where did you store these boxes of toilet paper a- a- a for, for a while? Well, the first night we had to kick the car out of the garage onto the driveway. Because I told <laughs> you the might kids, be... <laughs> do not unwrap it. Leave it in the pallet. All right, it hold on. Oh, hold on. I gotta, I- I'm sorry to interrupt, but I have to repeat what you just said because I don't think I've ever heard anyone say that in my life. You had to take the car out of your garage to store toilet paper I, I just that's unprecedented that's unprecedented haiti i've never heard anybody say that before <laughs> well you can lock up a car <laughs> <laughs> that's true so you take the car out of your garage just to store the toilet paper i mean i guess you could you could have a running joke right if somebody said to you well what the hell do you guys have all this toilet paper you can say well my husband just goes number two a lot i mean i get. i guess you could kind of have fun with this a little bit yeah yeah there was uh, plenty of puns plenty of jokes 
<laughs> Speaking of puns, guys, this is Jason, the producer. I set up this interview with you. Nice to talk to you uh, over the phone. Um, thanks for doing this. Uh, what was the name of the company that you actually ordered the toilet paper from? Who gives a crap? <laughs> Love that. I, I had to get that detail in there. So how many rolls of toilet paper now do you have in your home? You've, you've mentioned that you've been able to sell some of them. So what are we looking at right now? Well, we have our boxes 48 that we've unpacked into our cupboards. But then we've also got um, two boxes, I think, left. Oh, so that's not to too sell. bad. So, um, but we've, we've yeah. sort of marked it as sold out, and we're hanging on to those two boxes for emergencies for close friends and family who do actually run out because we that's don't know great. how long this shortage is going to last. Well, that's very nice of you guys to do that. I guess my question to you is, will you ever go online again to order toilet paper? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but You're I'll still going to do it. <laughs> uh, okay, come on now, Chris. What do you think about that? She says she's still going to continue to do it. Do you now trust her in ordering this toilet paper, or do you worry this could happen again? I'm pretty sure I'll be looking over her shoulder just to make sure <laughs> that she only orders one box, not 48. <laughs> Understandable. Okay, so on a serious note, a uh, question for both Chris and Haiti. And by the way, if you're just joining us, his name is Chris Janetsky. It's, it's Haiti as well. They accidentally bought 48 boxes of toilet paper. That's over 2,300 rolls uh, by accident before this coronavirus outbreak took place. And they're joining us right uh, on the line from Australia. So I have to ask you a question about your country. How are things going there right now? Obviously, in uh, across the globe, this is a pandemic. Uh, we live here in Las Vegas. I don't know if you guys have ever taken a trip to Las Vegas, but all the casinos have been closed for the next 30 days. What is it like? What is going on in Australia right now? What is the latest you could tell us? So we've been limited to uh, gatherings of 100 or less uh, inside buildings, within buildings, uh, but they also need to be big enough to have uh, four square metres per person. Uh, so we've really been limited in the size of our gatherings. Um, probably the most contentious thing is that schools are still open, so our government is still encouraging us to send our kids to school, um, but a lot of workplaces are um, closing or trying to get people to work from home. Um, we've had massive layoffs in some of our big industries. So Qantas, our um, biggest airline, um, has laid off a lot of people. So, yeah, things are starting to get a little bit scary. Um, and, and the economic sort of side of all of this is really starting to um, unravel, starting to show itself and... And, um, yeah, there's, there's massive concern about how far this is going to go and what the consequences will be and how long it will last for. As you know, Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson were both diagnosed with the coronavirus while in Australia. Once that happened, did that kind of ramp up the concern around the country? Uh, I, I think it actually... Um, in a lot of ways, it calmed a lot of things because we also saw them being released from hospital and and um, being cleared and everything like that. So, uh, yeah, but Tom Hanks can survive anything, can't he? Um, a plane right, crash, exactly. pirate, right. um, being stuck in a dead <laughs> That's true, although he could have used some... Yeah, that's true. He could have used some of your toilet paper when he was yeah, trapped on the fast. island. Yeah. So I have some advice for both of you, Chris and Haiti. By the way, you sound like two very lovely people, uh, and we appreciate you taking some time to join us. I think what you should do to help some people in this country, send some of that toilet paper to all the restrooms in the Taco Bells across the country. I think the company would greatly appreciate that. <laughs> Um, I visited the States a couple of years ago and, and tried Taco Bell, so I completely get that. <laughs> not, not, to be, not, not to be a stickler here, Brian, but I think the Taco Bells are actually closed right now. Oh, that's right. They but when are. they reopen, we yeah. could use some of your when TV. Reopen. Well, listen, Chris, Haiti, I appreciate both of you coming on our show, uh, making something good out, out of a mistake, uh, and uh, you guys uh, should be commended for that. Uh, good luck to you and your toilet paper in moving forward. And uh, you guys stay safe and stay healthy, okay? Thank you so much for taking some time to join us. We really appreciate it. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right. Thank you. There you go. That is Chris Janetsky and Haiti 
They're in Australia. They accidentally bought 48 boxes of toilet paper over 2,300 rolls. But you know what? They're really good people. They're, they're giving the toilet paper out to those in need, and I think uh, they should really be commended for that. It, did, uh, did they mention this in the interview, but that's actually 12-year supply? For JD, that's about one year supply. Yeah, well, for Jeff, but but for an average person, that's a twelve year supply of toilet paper. That's unbelievable. That's a, that's a jackpot. Yeah, they they really are. They're on a. They're they're literally. This thing goes on for twelve years. I know. They're set. They're set for life. They're set. <laughs> well, we appreciate them taking. They some definitely time caught lightning in a tissue. No question. Good one. <laughs> no question. That's a good one. All right, so we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, it is time for our hate mail segment of the day. I'm sure there'll be plenty of it to go around. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to the Vegas Take right here on the All. 101.5 FM, 7:20 AM, K Don. All right, welcome back. It is the Vegas Take Sharp and Shapiro wrapping up uh, the week of shows here on a Friday. And by the way, uh, let me just mention this real quickly. If you missed the explosive interview, I, I think it's fair to call it that, with uh, radio host Newsmax Wayne Allen Root, who, by the way, we're learning allegedly was just fired from the Review Journal. If you missed that interview, we'll have it up very soon on our Vegas Take Twitter page, on the Vegas Take YouTube page. We'll put it up on all of our social media platforms, and you can make the decision for yourself what yeah, side I, you I just, take. I don't understand how someone who you know self-proclaims to be so successful and so wealthy can just implode like that on air and not just say hey you know I, I made a couple of statements that i probably shouldn't have made over the course of my career you know and it doesn't make a difference if you've made twenty thousand outstanding tweets if you make one completely egregious over the top tweet you have to apologize yeah, you, for you, it. you have to that's and, all and if someone asks you about it and he and he literally said you know no liberal media and he called you a liberal has asked me about these tweets and then you asked him he said he said i'll answer the questions and, he, and then he didn't he did. actually answer any and questions then he called and then he name. started insulting yeah. you so yeah, yeah. it was i was actually very surprised that he lost his composure that fast yeah and i was happy to give him the time to explain but when you when your explanation or your defense is well that's only four or five tweets that's not a defense right uh you know it's not a defense when you put out a comment that says comparing uh calling somebody all just as offensive as calling somebody the n-word not only is it a ridiculous tweet but hurtful to a lot of people because clearly he doesn't understand the damage that that word has had well, over you, the course you're, of you're years. You're saying that age discrimination is on the same level as race discrimination? Ridiculous. But here's the thing. We all uh, – now, I've never said anything like that. I never would. But we're all human. We all make mistakes, even though I think he's made a lot of them. All he had to do was say, you know what, that was a horrible thing to say. I apologize to the African-American community. Or I apologize to the Muslims, the good Muslims out there, because I accused Muslims of, of uh, you know, uh, the October 1 shooting. Now, his defense was, well, you know, that day was crazy. Okay, that's fine. I understand. But if that day was and crazy. that day was crazy. Okay, but. And no one really knew what was happening. And that's, that's fine. And that's fine. But apologize. He can't apologize for anything he's ever done. And he wants me to apologize to him for calling him a name when he did the exact same thing to me in that interview. Uh, I find it mind-boggling. I don't want to spend any more time on this guy because, quite frankly, he's not worth it. Uh, but what we do want to do, I'll tell you something that is worth it. It's our producer's favorite segment of the day, and it is called Hate Mail. Stein, take her away. What do we got today? It's been a crazy week. We need a little bit of uh, humor and normalcy, don't we? So let's get back to ripping on Brian. Awesome. Susan writes, hi, guys. How are you? As soon as I tuned in this morning, I see Brian is still a raging lunatic. That's it? Just calls me a raging lunatic. That's it? I mean, you could do better that's than that, comment. Yeah, that, that's weak. That's the best comment you could come that, up with. It's almost a compliment, right? Well, that, yeah. That, that's a pretty standard sentiment. Yeah. There's nothing unusual about that. I, I I've heard that I'm hundreds even, of times. I mean, I don't know. We have a few people on hold, too, by the way. We'll take a few Yeah, we'll calls. take a couple Go ahead. calls. But uh, Big Daddy writes... Uh, Brian, we, he was listening to the Wayne Allen Root interview. Brian, you sound like a spoiled millennial arguing with your dad. Uh, Brian is such a child who hates everyone that disagrees with him. He even blocked me on Twitter for disagreeing. Brian says some real stupid crap, far more ridiculous than Wayne Allen Root. Then please give me one example of anything I said that is that is more ridiculous. See, you make a blatant claim like that, then be specific. Find me one thing that I've said that is far more ridiculous. I actually think uh, during the show, our Instagrams been getting a lot of messages from, uh, I, I don't know if the you know, Wayne Allen Root disciples, I guess, if you will. But I think this guy is probably one of those people that have messaged our Instagram. Oh, I'm not surprised. Go ahead, Stein. Uh, Dana writes, this program is like the moped at a Hells Angels convention. That's kind of funny. I like that. <laughs> good. I like Very it. good one. Uh, Maybell Shapiro, your mother. Uh, when Brian was 14, we found him passed out naked on our kitchen floor. When he came to, he explained that it was the neighbor's rabbit who snuck and stabbed him between his buttocks cheeks with a carrot. 
I'm, I'm not I sure wonder how long. Either. I wonder if this person who wrote that like <laughs> thought about what they were going to comment last night. Well, you know, it makes me think of Easter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's wrong with a carrot? Carrots thanks are as, good. Thanks as always, Maybell. And you you still deny that's your mother, right? Yes, that is okay. my mother. That's not my mother's name. <laughs> uh, Michael Avenatti, uh, doubtful it's the real Michael Avenatti who's in prison in Manhattan. That's a fair assumption. But a fake Michael Avenatti writes, not sure if, you, if you've read that I have three rats in my cell. I name them J.D., Brian, and Stein. I hold my own little daily podcast with them. It has helped me not to go completely insane. Okay, uh, not funny. Uh, not, not really funny I at all. kind of funny. I appreciate the no, shout-out. No, that wasn't yeah. bad at all. Should we take some call, Stein? What do you think? Let me give you one more here. All right. Uh, give me a second here. There was one that I really wanted. Not to... like we're on live radio or anything. No, it's okay. Oh, okay. This is the process, man. Oh, okay. Uh, the process. Trust the process. You sound uh, like the Detroit Lions. Uh, okay, here we go. Another comment, commenter. Brian looks like how I'd imagine Ted Binion to look right now. Well, the, the reference being that Ted Binion is dead. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you what, if I could look like a dead billionaire, that's, that, that, that's not a bad, bad thing. Uh, good old Ted Binion. And if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, um, Brian has all this week been doing the show in his bathrobe with his pasty white chest exposed to the world. Uh, yes. So Very that's sexy. a little incentive for you to, yeah. to sign up. Let's take some calls. All right, let's take some phone calls. Let me give out the number, 702-257-5396. Uh, free for all, I guess you could call it, to anything we've covered on the show today, whether it be the Wayne Allen Root interview, uh, Lawrence Weekly, I thought that was fantastic. We had Mr. X, the Hollywood conservative. Or how about those that couple, that lovely couple from Australia that bought 48 boxes of... 4.30 in the morning, by the way. Yeah, we... I appreciate- didn't mention that. They got up at 4.30 just nice. to do that. That with us. Very nice. 702-257-5396 the number to call. We'll try to squeeze in a few more calls before uh, uh, Sean Hannity. Let's go to Steve. Steve, you're first up here on the Vegas Take. What's going on? Hey, what's up, Steve? Thanks, guys. Thank you. Everything's good. Listen, when I uh, when I, I did call earlier, Alex Jones and uh, Wayne Allen Root are related. And when I was kidding about that, they're both pushing uh, colloidal silver. They're two phonies, two frauds, and they're both. Brian, once again, you did a fantastic job. Good job. Something else I'd like to tell you. I just got a report from a friend of mine in Brooklyn. Unemployment in Brooklyn is so bad now, the mafia had to lay off four judges. <laughs> oh, jeez. That's, yeah, that's a good one. report I'd like to give you about Yes. Cab. You had a uh, Uber guy on, which was good. Do you know that um, Yellow Cab has two gentlemen who do nothing but sanitize cabs all day? And my friend had to wait 38 minutes the other day. He's been a driver for a long time. By the well, way, that could, driver, that could, that could, long that long could really, that could really put somebody to insanity. I mean, just ask Robert De Niro. He went a little crazy at the end of that movie. Anyway, we appreciate the phone call. Uh, good to hear from you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Carl. Number to call: 702-257-5396. Questions, concerns. We want to hear from you. Your stories in regards to the coronavirus. Obviously, we're ra- wrapping up a week of shows. The only way we could do this show was to actually do it from a remote location. We couldn't do it from a bar. We couldn't do it from a restaurant we had to do it from somebody's home so we decided to do it from mine and uh you know it's crazy crazy situation crazy times that we're living in again that number two five seven five three nine six my question is you know here we are on a friday uh, a normal weekend for many what are you all going to do this weekend you can't go out to a restaurant you can't go to a movie theater you can't go to your local bar you can't go play bingo jd you can't gamble what are we all going to do this weekend? That is my question to all of you, including you, J.D. What are you going to do well, I'm going to do a lot of working. We're actually uh, are, we're in the process of possibly expanding our show on a national level to several, if not dozens, of new markets. And I am going to work on kind of developing that deal. And that will take a, a good amount of my time to do that and then... Uh, besides, that, I'll hang out with my, my family, my daughter, my two-year-old daughter, uh, my wife, who I just purchased a, a PS4 for so she can just you know sit at home and play video games, which is mm-hmm. great. But uh, no sports. Might not go to the park a couple times. Hopefully the weather is nice. No I, bed, I, bath, I, and beyond this no, weekend. No, that's not going to take place. But I, I hope the weather is nice. And I can, you know, maybe do, do a jog or something along those lines. I hope it's not, you know, 48 or 60 degrees. I hope it's you know, 75 to 80, something along those well, lines. Well, I'll tell that, you what. That would be outstanding for me. I'll tell you what. I think I think me and Stein are going to watch a lot of porn together this week. Absolutely, I think you that's should. What, I think that's what we're going to do. That's isn't a wise that, decision. Isn't that right, Stein? Six feet away from each other. <laughs> Six feet away. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, I didn't plan on watching Six inches porn with you. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to, by the way, J.D., is your is your uh, wife, you know, she's. I would say she's got a mild uh, uh, addiction to bingo. 
Is this affecting her that she hasn't been no, able to no, go to bingo I'm, hall I'm actually, for a few days? I'm actually very happy about it. I think I, well, you're I, happy I, about I, it. I, I believe, she's loving it. Well, she won five grand, like her third time playing. Right, right. And then we actually lost about 35 sessions in a row. Oh, my. And each of those sessions cost me probably $225. So we actually ended up down a couple thousand. So I'm very relieved that I'm not playing bingo six nights a week right now. I'm very relieved. But I'm going to be self-quarantined. You know, th thanks for bringing that up. I just developed a small case of a bingo PTSD. Okay, sorry about that. That's fine. I'm going to be self-quarantining all weekend. This is great because that's what I do on the weekends anyway. Now I just have an official uh, government excuse to do it. Absolutely. Uh, and I'll probably be doing some show-related stuff and I don't know. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to find some, some weights, some free weights or, you know, because no gyms are open. i, I got to figure out how to kind of stay in shape. Yeah, about, a lot of people are saying that they're going to take this. To go to the gym. Yeah, a lot of people are no, saying they're going to take this opportunity to get fit. But it's going to happen, Stein. You know, it, it will take place. It when is this going to be over, J.D.? You've you, you're got a pretty good handle on these things. You read a lot, you know. With the new, with the new news about the the chloroquine slash Z pack hybrid cure potentially, I think that in the next three weeks we'll see some serious progress. If you actually look at the death rate, it's down significantly. You're going to see probably that drop to probably less than one percent, um, and and you're going to realize that there's hundreds of thousands of people who have the virus in this country, and a lot of them just are not symptomatic. A lot of them have mild symptoms, and that actually is not a bad thing because if you have this virus and you get over the virus and you develop an immunity to it, if the virus comes back, then you can't spread it to somebody else. And so I actually I actually think that it's not the worst thing in the world for a lot of Americans to have the virus, have it not affect them so that if the virus does come back, that they're not spreading it again. Will there be a, 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 will there be a March Madness in May? There's no chance. Will no. there be an NBA season? No chance. NBA, Not at all? No, zero? No, NBA is over. NHL is over. And that sucks because I've got, I've got about eight grand in futures that I can't get out of the out of the sports books because they're not open. When will baseball start up again? Baseball starts, I believe, probably June 1st. Okay, so a shortened baseball season. Which, I mean, yeah. The, no NBA playoffs. The, the, the baseball season is 162 games long. It, does, yeah. it doesn't need to do that long in so the first play place. Like a half probably season. like 120 games, maybe 100 games. Uh, I think NBA is over, and I think NHL is over. And the reason I think NBA is over is because all it takes is one of these guys who has this virus to show up and say, you know, your, your, lung, your lung capacity yeah. is diminished or something along those lines, and there's a giant potential lawsuit there. I think the NBA is, is risking a lot because concerning they've got seven teams now with players that have, with, with either players or members of the organizations that actually have tested positive for the coronavirus, and two, including two Los Angeles Lakers, mind you. You know, it's kind of the, the country's number one organization from a, from a fan base standpoint, especially what's going on in California as well. I just and I, yeah. Also, you're looking at Illinois. They're, they're doing the, 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 st the stay-at-home shelter thing. That's going to start on Saturday, I believe. So, yeah, I think NHL is over. I think NBA is over. Major League Baseball will happen, and, and, and NFL will happen, and so will college football. The fans will be the most ravenous they've ever yeah. been in their entire you life. You can't take football away from No, people. there's no Of I mean, course, I just want to know. It's going to be unbelievable, the response by the fans. And in Las Vegas is not going to feel this at all once everything's done. <laughs> Las Vegas will, will explode. Let me just note this. The you know like the Dayton Flyers of the of the right. NCAA that are like or San Diego State that had a great season that will never be able to finish this off. My Milwaukee Bucks, first place, best record in the NBA, probably the best chance that they've had to win the championship since 1971, and we're never gonna we're not gonna see the end of this season. Think about all those sports stories that uh, that are out there. Well, anyway, you know if, if they keep Giannis, 30 seconds, they'll have a chance again. But, you know, Giannis hasn't been a gamer thus far. All right, so let me just close by saying this. Uh, we're going to continue to do this next week. We are going to be live on Monday, uh, wherever it may be. It could be my kitchen. Maybe it's the studio. I doubt that. But we are going to be broadcasting live, and uh, we are going to continue to bring you the, the latest information we can with the best guests that we can put together. And uh, also, we're going to hear from you. So I uh, hope everybody gets through the weekend okay. Please stay safe. Stay healthy, everybody. Sean Hannity coming up next. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a great afternoon.